Alright folks, my name is Frain and today I'm going to be going over a few clips of the M56. This is a 90mm gun strapped to a pair of tracks, currently sitting at 6.7 in the American tech tree. To start off with, you only get access to APCR, which is an absolutely terrible round. I'm not going to go over any of those games in this video as they were a long time ago. I will be focusing entirely on usage of the APHE as I did not have the heat of us or hash rounds at the time of recording these. Uh, it's actually a few weeks ago now. But for this first clip I am on Fields of Normandy and I'm trying to use the fantastic mobility of this thing to fly up along the northern edge of the map, get as far forward as I can, as fast as I can and hopefully onto the side of the enemies where they won't expect me. Now this part of the map is uh, quite a hot spot though and I do need to pick my targets very carefully, it's all about not getting seen. So I've got a panther there, there's a king tiger just on the side of those bushes and there's a little rain here. Now ideally I would drive over and go for the panther first. He was the enemy most to the rear and therefore least likely to give me away on his death. But I chose to go for the little rain for a couple of reasons. The first was simply the panther's position. I couldn't shoot him in the back or sides, so he was less likely to die in one shot and might get a chance to shoot me back. The second is that because of the position I would be in to shoot him, I would be a lot closer to the Lorraine and a good chance the Lorraine might have actually noticed the shot. Either way, I've taken that shot, the Lorraine's dead and I'm backing up. The panther's coming over and into the line of fire of a couple of my teammates who were thankfully looking this way. If they hadn't shot him, it's a Panther D, it's got poor turret traverse, and there's a decent chance I could get around it. So, time to move up and take the Panther. Or at least, in theory, um, while my gun was initially pointed below his turret, by the time I pressed fire it had rocked slightly higher up and ended up doing very minimal damage to the side of his turret. Neither of these two tanks here have noticed me though, so we'll line up binoculars because I'm shooting through a bush and I can't quite see. And after he's dead, thankfully, IS-2 does not seem to have noticed me yet, so just reload, push up until I've got gun depression. Now he's spotted me, but through the front of the turret, thankfully. So that's uh, another kill picked up, and time to move up. You can see there's a massive amount of recoil on this gun due to how lightweight the vehicle is. Every time you press fire, it will send you backwards quite a way, and certainly throw your scope upwards. So I tend to hit reverse as I fire anyway. It's got a good reverse gear. And you can use that kickback to help you get out of trouble a bit. That's four kills now. And we've got the map pretty much under control, so I'm just going to uh, pick up what I can. The initial engagement's over, and I've got good mobility that I can use to stay around on the flanks. It's definitely a vehicle that needs to be played sneakily. Isn't going to work on every map. Now, as an incredibly lightly armoured vehicle, it has also been given the scouting feature to try and give it a bit more usefulness. That certainly can come in quite handy. What's a bit less handy is your vulnerability to aircraft. It's probably the most common way for this vehicle to die. You've really got to try and keep yourself hidden. But we now move on to clip number two. This is Ardennes uh, Conquest. That whole horde of tanks going across there. Despite my speed, I was only just in time to get one shot off, but that's an IS-2 down. I might just have been able to squeeze a second shot off. Um, unfortunately, by the time you realise there's still a target there, it's probably a bit too late. It's a mobile vehicle, but the gun traverse isn't the fastest. So sometimes you won't always get the gun on target when you've got a, a brief moment to shoot like that. The other thing I didn't really do properly there was I didn't scout. Remembered for this Ferdinand though, and I'm just waiting for him to drive into a position where I have a, a decent angle. Maybe even on those shoulders on the front of his tank, allowing me to pen him. I can't pen him frontally right now, not without the heat of S rounds. He's almost about to get into the right angle, but he obviously saw my gun shield poking the ridge and pointed towards me, so Time to reposition, I think. There was no real danger of him pushing me, 
but there's no point in me staying there if I can't peek for shots. So we're working around again getting that mobility into good use. I've just spotted something moving in this uh, little patch of bushes here. Not all of them render in third person so line up in the third person view turn on the scope to make sure I'm at the right height. I'm not going to shoot over the top take the shot and knock out the Tiger 2. This is really how the M56 needs to be played in my opinion. It's out on the flanks preferably avoiding driving into trees because you don't have a great amount of engine power to push them over. We need to be out where the enemy's less likely to look, where you've got a, a good chance of escaping if somebody does happen to look your way. It's small, it's fast, but it's so incredibly weakly armoured. A light breeze will you know, cause your crew a rather large amount of harm. If you can avoid the open areas where you're going to be easy to spot, especially from above, it'll help a lot. I'm just working my way around the flanks, looking for targets. With an APHE shell, you don't need to stay still too long to get the kill. You shouldn't be there for sort of two, three shots. It should just be fire and move on. It's a hurry. Just driving across the field. I don't quite have the right angle on him, or at least I don't think I do. It's not got the greatest side armor, but I wasn't willing to take the chance here. So instead, I'm marking him up with the scouting mechanic. I'm just going to leave him there. Try and keep him in my view in case he does start to turn. And I'm going to, again, reposition around. Try and decrease that angle a bit. There we go. He's obviously already taken a a few crew members damage. So finish him off and now we'll tuck back down into this little hole. It's got good enough gun depression to allow me to minimize the exposure. Although without having a lot of bushes uh, plastered over the tank, the gun shield is certainly uh, a noticeable enough shape as is that crew member sat on the back of the tank. Now, no chance to shoot this Jagdpanther in the side because, again, an aircraft flying over has uh, noticed me. That's my gunner down. Thankfully, he didn't hit anything else. Uh, it's very unusual to survive a strafing like that. But in the process, I have lost track of the Jagdpanther. By the time I've spotted him, traversed my gun around, got back into view, he slipped away into the trees. Skip ahead a couple of minutes. Just still waiting for targets to come back to the cap. Staying out on the flank. There's a Panther II coming along. Nothing particularly special, just shot into the side. APHE does the job exactly as needed. Yak Panther's back. And just slightly scuffed this shot. If it had hit the upper superstructure, that would have been probably a kill. If it had hit the, uh, the engine, he wouldn't have been going anywhere and I could have followed it up with a kill. It was pretty much the worst case scenario there. Now there was a second target I had right in the middle of my scope without realising at the time. But the IU is a perfectly good target. I'm quite happy to take that down instead. That's kill number five. I'm just staying out on this flank. Stay away from the travelled areas of the map. It's all about that stealth for this thing. And just picking up a final kill. Again, working my way further around. Get rid of a whirlwind. Potentially one of the uh, most deadly vehicles that this can meet with the sheer rate of fire that's got. No amount of distance will ever reduce the verbal wind down to the, the point where it can't kill you. It's fully exposed crew, you know, zero millimetres of armour in the way. Well, that was six kills, and so on to clip number three. This is Conquest on Japan, and again, I'm working my way around the edges of the map. 
whilst going right to the map border might be a, a little scummy, it's the way that this thing has to play if you want to keep it alive. You have to go far out, away from where the enemy's going to be looking. No luck with the initial shot there on the T-44. Took out his breach, or at least severely crippled his breach. No kill. I'm just going to back up a bit. I don't want to stay in the same place for too long. There could be artillery dropping, there could be enemies uh, looking to where the shot came from. It's going to be dangerous. I need to keep repositioning as much as I can. Scout up the Tiger 2P. Seems to have noticed one of us over here. But shot through the turret front. Again, 90mm APHE. It does great work. Won't go through the Tiger 2 H's turret front, but with the Tiger 2P, that was a, a one shot. I'm just biding my time, waiting for more enemies to turn up. I've got that scouting feature. I should use it. If I've got an angle on someone and I can't pen them myself, mark them up, let the enemy know I'm here. A T44 has just taken out my little uh, companion there. Hopefully he doesn't realise there's two of us. I wasn't sat as far up the hill as him, so he might not have seen me. And even knowing that there was an M56 over here who shot the Tiger too, he might not have realised it was a different one. Obviously names should give it away, but not everybody keeps an eye on the kill log. So here he comes. Scout him up. Hopefully he doesn't come straight at me. If he does, due to him having poor gun depression, I should be able to get a shot off first. But it's going to be awkward and not the best chance of penning. He's not coming for me though, so nice side shot. Kill number two. But there's another 44 in the background and right now my biggest fear is artillery. So just poised, ready to flee. He is getting shot though, so someone out there is looking out for me and giving me some cover. Hopefully he won't try and push any further up. So I'm just going to sit back, keep my eyes around the cap. And we'll move ahead. T-44 is now dead, I've taken the opportunity to move up. It turns out there's actually a Tiger 2 over here as well that I didn't know about. I shot for the breach here trying to get the breach and the gunner specifically because his machine guns alone can kill me. I could have gone to try and get a one shot or go for the ammo rack with the first round. There's a chance it might not have worked. If his gunner survived at all he could have just turned and taken me down so there's always that element of risk if you don't get the gunner or if they have a, a roof mounted gun as well if you don't get the commander good chance that you're going to die. Now I knew there was a heavy somewhere around this area of the map. I wasn't entirely sure it was the one that I'd shot so I'm tucking in just want to double check that kill log and make sure that it's actually the same guy. That doesn't appear to be anyone else. I think I'm safe and I can start to move on. This is sort of a back route around from their spawn towards the cap. And it does get used a reasonable amount. And there's always a chance that somebody else is going to come this way, so... I'll have to get off the main, main sort of travel area, get it up, out of sight if I can. Thankfully this T-3485 there didn't see me. So pop a shot into his turret ring. Anywhere on the front of his tank would have done with this gun, but got the turret ring, covered the whole crew. And now we're going to go up this hill. If enemies do come this way, they're a bit less likely to look up at me. But we'll skip ahead as nothing does come along, and it's pretty much just wrapping up the game now and the video. Just a couple of uh, kills around their spawn now. I can see some anti-aircraft fire coming out from behind this house, so let's go for a guess shot. Managed to hit the target, so that's another kill. He's probably a bit, a bit miffed by that shot. 
I've not really had any amazingly standout games in the M56 in the end. It being so fragile has meant that I'm not terribly aggressive with it. Often a bit overly cautious, especially with how much of each game is spent trying to hide from an aircraft. Just make sure they don't see me. I don't really see myself ever getting any spectacularly high kill counts in this vehicle, sort of. It's unlikely for me, uh, with the style that I play, to end up with, you know, a double ace or anything. I can get a few above average games, but there's going to be probably none of those really, really big uh, standout games. Oh, that recoil just kicking me off the top of that, uh, that little hill there. But again, kill number six, and that pretty much wraps up the video. Um, once again, I apologise that all the footage recently has been taken from streams, so there's stream overlays and stuff on there. I haven't really been playing a huge amount offline. I might have to start doing so again, though, as I've realised recently quite how infrequent my videos have become. But that's all for now. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.